what do you put the chances of having found life? At this stage, I would say 50-50. It took me about a week to muster the courage to even think that that's anywhere close to real and break it to my own group, my own students <laughs> working with me. So, so you don't drink anyone, you're just shell-shocked for a while. And then we slowly all come together and work on it for many more months uh, before, uh, weeks and months before we robustly establish it and then you, you publish it and so on. For decades, the quest to find life beyond our planet has been one of the major objectives in the field of science. And now, NASA's powerful James Webb Space Telescope could be making the biggest discovery ever, sooner than we thought. Situated approximately 120 light-years away from Earth within the habitable zone of its star, there's a planet called K218b, which has long held scientists' fascination for its unique characteristic. Discovered first in the year 2015, this exoplanet garnered a lot of attention. When scientists found water vapor in its atmosphere, that's why when JWST was launched, K218b was one of the favorite candidates to be studied by the powerful telescope. The recent surge of interest in this particular planet stemmed from new observations of its atmospheric composition, revealing some peculiar findings. Firstly, there was a presence of methane, which, theoretically, could indicate the potential for life as it is considered a possible biosignature. Additionally, there was an abundance of carbon dioxide and a notable absence of carbon monoxide, characteristics not dissimilar to Earth's atmosphere. However, the most intriguing discovery was the potential detection of dimethyl sulfide, DMS, a toxic gas known on Earth to be produced solely by certain algae in the oceans. If confirmed, this detection could signify a direct detection of life on another planet, or more like a water world, aka a Hycean planet. Based on the density data provided by Webb, we can suppose that K218b may have an enormous ocean and a thick hydrogen atmosphere resulting in the water being slightly warmer than here on Earth. So the exoplanet could very likely be somewhere between a super-Earth and a sub-Neptune, and that fits the description of an ocean world quite well. The cherry on top here is the detection of methane, which is particularly exciting because typically it doesn't last in atmospheres for more than two or three years due to solar radiation. So there must be something that is refilling it in the atmosphere, and that my friends raises the question, is this an indirect evidence of life beyond our planet? It, it hits you hard when, when... Uh, you see the possibility of such a big, uh, big discovery. It, it, for, for a scientist, um, it's, it's quite enormous. Uh, but the prospect of that being there has enormous ramifications because the search for life elsewhere has been one of the uh, longest standing uh, quest of, of our species, of humankind. Uh, so if this is when it's going to come true finally, that's a momentous occasion and we don't take it lightly. Well, Dr. Niku Madhusudhan, an astrophysicist from the University of Cambridge, has spearheaded the research on K218b and uncovered intriguing details about its makeup and atmospheric characteristic. Last Friday, April the 26th, the telescope once again turned towards the planet and observed it for several minutes to cross-check data from the first observation. It just happened this morning, actually, so, so it has already done it uh, early this morning. Uh, so we have the observations, they're beaming um, uh, in right now. Uh, so we're waiting for the data to come to us, and the analysis will start anytime now. If we do detect DMS, it does put it basically at the top for potential signs of habitability, Dr. Madhusudhan told The Times. What's interesting here is that scientists have not been able to prove that DMS can be produced in the absence of living beings. The researchers are more than 50% confident that DMS is present in the planet's atmosphere as per the observations. A team to NASA Ames Research Center and the University of Washington approached this question by using two sets of models with JWST data. The first model describes rocky planets with surface oceans with and without life, while the other set describes gaseous planets without a surface and without life. 
both the models predict the planet's photochemistry, as in the chemical reactions in the atmosphere driven by photons from the host star, and also the climate of the exoplanet. The team found that K218b is unlikely to be a lifeless water world because such a planet wouldn't have enough methane in its atmosphere to match the JWST observations. Yes, a water world with microbial life is more promising, with simple methane-producing organisms that may be able to produce the supply of methane seen in the planet's atmosphere. That's exciting! But despite the excitement, the team found that the uninhabitable, gas-rich exoplanet model also fits the JWST data well and may present fewer challenges. The ocean world model not only requires life to explain its atmosphere, but also struggles to reconcile the needed cool surface temperature with the likelihood of a runaway greenhouse effect. What this means is that the planet might be too hot for life to be present at all, and hence the team suggests that efforts involved in looking for life on exoplanets should first test planetary temperature to ensure that it is not too hot to host an ocean. So there you have it. Neither model perfectly fits all the features in K218b's spectrum. Future JWST data could reveal one of the two things. The presence of ammonia, indicating a gaseous planet, or DMS which would strongly suggest an inhabited water world. What do you think is likely? A water world or a gas giant? Let me know by dropping in your comments below. For now, we move on to another exoplanet that is unlike anything you've ever seen. There is an exoplanet that so far has been described as hellish. Some scientists have even called it terrifying. This apparent hell of a planet revolves very close to its star, so close that the temperatures soar high enough to vaporize lead. However, recently, astronomers while looking at the planet saw something strange that led them to add a new adjective to the list. Glorious. But how is a hellish planet glorious? Discovered in 2013, this planet, called WASPS 76b, orbits its parent star just 48 million kilometers away. This means that the distance between the exoplanet and its star is much smaller compared to the distance between our Sun and Mercury. So you can imagine how hot it is going to be there. To make things hotter, its parent star, WASPS-76, is a yellow-white main-sequence star, about 1.5 times more massive than our Sun. If we were to ever become an advanced interstellar species, and decided to make a trip to WASP-76b, which is only 637 light-years away, what would we see? Well, for starters, the gas giant is tidally locked to its parent star, meaning one side always faces the star, while the other is in perpetual darkness. As you can already tell, the day side of WASP-76b is not the average sunny day on Earth temperatures soar to over 2400 degrees Celsius, which is hot enough to vaporize iron. Yes, you heard that right. Iron, a metal, turns into a gas on this scorching hot side. But here's the twist. The intense heat doesn't just stop at vaporizing iron. The planet's fierce winds carry this iron vapor to the cooler night side. There, it condenses back into liquid form and falls as rain. Yes, iron rain. And this iron rain has led astronomers to observe indications of a phenomenon known as glory in the atmosphere of the planet. This rainbow-like effect consists of colorful concentric rings of light that appear under unique circumstances. And apart from Earth, this effect has been seen only once in the atmosphere of our neighbor, Venus. But there is a reason no glory has been seen before outside our solar system. It requires very specific conditions. First of all, you need particles in the atmosphere that are almost perfectly spherical, completely uniform and stable enough to be observed over a long time. The planet's nearby star needs to shine directly at it, while being observed by the observer at just the right orientation. The observer in this case would be us, or more specifically, the European Space Agency's exoplanet hunting mission 
so-called characterizing exoplanet satellite, aka KOPS. If repeated observations verify the phenomenon to be occurring on WASP-76b, it could change everything we know about the ultra-hot exoplanet. KOPS monitored WASP-76b extensively, conducting nearly two dozen observations over three years. Scientists were particularly intrigued by an unusual light asymmetry observed in the planet's outer regions during its transits across its parent star. These observations unveiled a notable rise in light intensity along WASP-76b's eastern terminator line, marking the boundary between its night side and day side. The researchers attributed this distinct change in brightness to a pronounced directional and reflective phenomenon, which they dubbed the glory effect. Despite the chaos, it looks like we've detected the potential signs of a glory. It's an incredibly faint signal, said a scientist from ESA. But why is this a big deal? What significance does the glory effect hold for WASP-76b? The presence of this phenomenon in the ultra-hot Jupiter's atmosphere suggests the existence of clouds made of perfectly round water droplets. These clouds may have endured for at least three years or are constantly replenished. If the clouds persist, it implies that the temperature of WASP-76b's atmosphere, though extreme, remains relatively constant. This is a fascinating observation suggesting stability in a place previously thought to be endlessly turbulent. These findings also suggest that scientists studying exoplanets could look for similar light phenomena, such as starlight reflecting off liquid lakes or oceans on other distant worlds. This could be crucial in humanity's quest to find life beyond our solar system. What do you guys think? Drop in your comments below and don't forget to subscribe to Territory because this is your space.